didn't she? She took many great men right to the grave, didn't she? There's no nice way to say it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is churches that veil the fact that Jesus is the, the way, the truth, and the life. They take his divinity away from him and give it to somebody else. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the, of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture under the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Is there any reason anybody needs to drink this cup? Didn't Jesus drink this cup? Amen. He drank it for everybody, didn't he? For every single person. So if somebody chooses to not follow Jesus Christ and to die in their sins, do they die for their sins? No. No, they don't die for their sins because Jesus died for their sins. Amen. He bought their freedom. He bought their pardon. But what happens? Through unbelief? They choose to die? Is that God's fault? Who's the one that suffers here? I'll tell you, it's God who suffers. It's His children that He doesn't have forever. You know, and, and, and there's churches that teach, most of the churches teach that you burn in hell forever. Come on. If you had a son or a daughter that was terribly, just horrible, Say they were a serial killer. Okay, a, a, a dog, a rabid dog. You'd have to put it down, right? Okay. But your dog or your child, even if you had to put them out, would you want them to suffer forever and ever and ever? I mean, you as a, as a human being, without the capacity to love like God loves, could you even fathom your child suffering for eternity because they did something that was horrible? Does that even make sense to you? You know, the spirit of prophecy tells us that this, this doctrine is taught, it's driven people mad. Pagan doctrine. It is a pagan doctrine. And the smoke of their torment ascended forever and ever. Ooh, what does that sound like? And they have no rest, day nor night. Isn't that an interesting little part of the verse? They have no rest. The people that don't want the sign of God, the seal of God, but they want the mark of the beast, they have no rest. God's given all kinds of clues here. I mean, if you really are honest at heart and you want to know the truth, it's right here. God has always wanted to give the truth to his people. He doesn't do anything without explaining it to the prophets. Doesn't he promise that in the Bible? I'll do nothing. God is so gracious and wonderful. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that what? And what? The faith of Jesus. And the faith of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, John... Jim's been talking about this all morning, so I want to go there. Ephesians 4, 5. Ephesians 4, 5, and 6. It seems you guys got me up here so good and early. I'm not going over too bad. I'm going to wrap it up right here. It's 12.03. You guys can all fill your bellies. What's this say? Where are you? Right? Ephesians 4, 5. Oh. Ephesians 4, 5. Let's, let's read that together. 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of us all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Does that leave any room for wiggle? I don't think so. Brothers and sisters, we're going to leave it there. Our closing song is 528.